Good evening, everybody. It is currently uh, January 15th, 2019. Welcome to DES 109 Graphic Design 1. We are in our fourth uh, week of Mod 13 of 2018 into 2019. And this is actually live session two. This is just the first slide from yesterday's um, yesterday's presentation, so we're gonna actually skip ahead a few slides in just a minute. And we are going to just be wrapping up. We're gonna be doing a demo of the assignment today, and hopefully I'll be able to get to one or two more critiques. Um, wanna make sure that I fully go through the process of setting up your Behance portfolio so that you are ready to go with your own design, um, design career. So, excuse me. Here we go. If um, I apologize if I sound like I'm munching or something tonight, I have a little bit of a sore throat, so I have a cough drop one. But um, I want to make sure that we that uh, you guys can all hear me real well. So off we go. Oop, there we go. So we're just like I said, we're just going to skip ahead here. These were all from yesterday. Okay. So we have live session two. And like I said, we are doing your online portfolio today. First of all, why create an online portfolio? There are lots of different reasons why you create an online portfolio, which is why it becomes part of uh, this, this class. It's very important. First thing to showcase your work, you wanna be showing off all the things that you've created to invite in new clientele, to invite new interviewers, also to, um, to show them what it is that you can do so you can try to sneak, or not even sneak in, but you want to kind of snag, there we go, that's what I wanted to snag, your chance for an interview to actually show off your communication skills as well. Sometimes that's actually a first impression, uh, your, your potential employer will actually look at your, your work and see if you can demonstrate the, the, or you can produce the kind of product that they're looking for. And that brings us to, you're letting potential employers know that you're available. Even though I currently have a lot of work going on myself, in, you know, in addition to Independence University, I actually work for a screen print company. I do a little bit of my own, um, own freelance work as well. And, Oh, I always, I like to try to make sure that my portfolio is always up to date because you never know what can happen. You might just meet the right person who has a position, you know, your dream position available. And maybe you're not so happy at your job, or maybe you are happy at your job, but this particular opportunity happens to be just the absolute perfect opportunity. So it's uh, great to really have that available at, you know, a moment's notice to build a network of resources, collaborators, and clients. This is actually a huge thing. Sorry, my internet browser came up. It just reminded me of something that I wanna make sure that I show you guys a little bit later. So I wanna do that while I'm talking here as well. Um, so you, like I said, to build a network of resources, collaborators, and clients, um, there are search engines for employers to go on these sites and to take a look at the individuals that are out there. They can see firsthand, like I said, they can see firsthand their, their work and determine if they have the right experience or the right, um, the right skills for their particular clientele, their particular types of projects. And um, collaborators, you, there are, it's almost like a little, a little community of, of artists and designers, you kind of, you get to know each other, you learn from each other, you can find inspiration on these portfolio sites, and you're, a, a, as a result, you're building a network of resources too. You can follow individuals and try to see what they've got going on. And as a result, you know, maybe uh, there are other forums or other communities online that you may be directed to. People might post articles that are, are helpful in terms of following the markets, following social media trends, 
and that kind of thing. And so it's, it's also very helpful in that aspect. And I've actually, I've already even mentioned this because as usual, I, as I'm talking, I'm kind of jumping ahead of my bullet points. Um, but again, it provides a great first impression to the employers also shows that you're the, um, shows to the few uh, potential employers that you are, that you're professional, that you have taken time and energy out of your schedule and that to put that aside and to prepare for this kind of thing. So it shows if you were to work on a project for them, you would be putting forth the time and energy required or that they would really desire for you to have um, in putting towards their, towards their own projects. So the benefits of having an online portfolio, it's constantly working for you by increasing your visibility and I actually mentioned this in my lecture yesterday, where even when you are not online, when you are sleeping, when you are doing your own work, it's, it's already out there and you don't have to be actually assigned into your portfolio for someone to see your work. So if it's midnight on the East Coast in the United States and someone out in China is looking for a uh, a designer that you could potentially um, grab someone's attention. They can shoot you a message and then boom, you wake up the next morning and you have a potential lead. So that's, um, that's really beneficial for you. Uh, it's flexible. Long, long gone are the times of the print portfolio where um, I, I don't exactly know the the age groups we've got here in this class this uh, this week, but when I first started, and it's going to sound like it was a million years ago, but it wasn't that long ago, um, online portfolios weren't the thing to do. So I know that I went to lots of interviews with a print portfolio, a a hard copy to bring in, I had to make sure that I either provided a, a hard copy that, you know, it was an, it was an extra copy and bye bye, there goes that copy. Or I had to make sure that I you know, requested to get, have it given back before the end of my interview so I could keep that copy at home. With the online portfolio and the use of smartphones and other mobile devices, you can edit, upload, uh, you know, download, uh, create albums, delete albums, pretty much almost anywhere. And you can do it within five minutes. You can set aside four hours. You, you know, it is incredibly flexible and convenient. In addition to the fact that if you have an employer that's looking to see some of your work, whether they are five minutes down the road or completely across the country, you can send them your your URL, and they can see it within minutes, um, and sometimes within seconds, depending on you know where where they are uh, in where they have access to a device or or whatnot while you're speaking with them. So it's actually flexible in both venues. It's flexible both for the job seeker and for the job interviewer. Keeps you organized and up to date. This is actually huge. You can very easily see as you are maintaining your portfolio where your skills are, where you need extra work, and maybe uh, kind of you, you start to kind of catalog what your projects are. You start to kind of make groups and Maybe you're noticing that your you know, portfolio for packaging design is a little bit lacking. You start doing a few more projects in that arena and you've got 30 different page layouts. Or, well, maybe you really don't need that many. Maybe you, maybe you should take some off there. It also actually shows you, like I said, it shows you actually where your skills are or where you're strong or where you're lacking because you can see older work. And as you... As you gain more and more experience, as you gain or as you practice with the design principles and the design elements, and you're starting to figure out what works and what doesn't work, you're going to notice a great difference in the pieces that you create now versus the pieces you created five years ago. And you'll look back and think, oh, dear Lord, I can't believe I think that I thought that that was good or 
maybe five years from now, you'll look back at a, a project you did in either this class or another class and think, you know what, like, I'm actually really impressed with myself. My instincts were really good. I, I still think that this is a, a really good piece. And, and that's a wonderful thing. The being able to kind of compare and critique yourself, you know, we, we had discussed that in, um, in one of the weeks in this particular mod where we were doing our self critique, being able to look for improvements and as well as your strengths, that's a, that's a very important thing to do. Also provides resources for research. Like I mentioned in the previous slide, you might find forums and community blogs. You might find uh, articles that will lead you to um, different uh, museum sites that you didn't know about um, or, or you know just just lots of different avenues for research or even just like I said other fellow artists or fellow designers that simply by following their work and watching the things that they create and how they create them sometimes you know, a lot of them they like to do tutorials or they maybe will show um, a sped up version of you know, particular project that they did where they spent you know 600 hours doing it but it's a time-lapse video and you can watch and see what it is what their process is it, even something like that even though it might seem like it's just for entertainment that absolutely can be a learning tool um, you're you know you're in your classes here you're watching demos because we're showing you guys how to use the tools and what things may work and may not work so it's the same same kind of thing, just in a different medium. And uh, lastly, on this particular one, it draws employers in by providing visuals of your experience. Again, already mentioned this, but you know it provides something for them to see. You're putting not a not a face with a name, but you're putting an image with a name. You're you are if you are able to make yourself stand out, like I had mentioned in the, the lecture yesterday. If you're able to kind of uh, make your name, make your brand jump out at that individual, they're going to remember your pieces and you know, you'll have something to kind of connect it with. Um, I know that uh, people, there are some very visual learners out there, they might learn the exact same information three times, but once you throw an image in there, that's the time it actually sticks. Same kind of thing. So examples of uh, online portfolio sites, we have a couple of different ones in here. We have, um, first of all, Behance.net, which is um, essentially connected to Adobe, and that's the one that we're going to be talking about tonight. We have Dribble. Uh, notice that there are three Bs, D-R-I-B-B-B-L-E.com. That's this logo over here, and Behance is this one right here. Coreflow.com. That's this guy right over here. Uh, the Adobe portfolio, which again, like I said, Adobe is connected to Behance and there's actually another little tool um, that you can actually use to get this particular portfolio started. Carbonmade.com, and these are just five different ones. These are the top five in this particular article down here. And um, I will see if I can actually try to remember to post that particular link out there. So you can find lots of different uh, examples of free portfolio websites. There are some pay ones out there, but the way I look at it, unless it's really exactly what you're looking for, it doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense to me to, to use a pay one, especially when a lot of these free ones, um, you know, they provide job search tools. They provide a way to connect with potential employers and, um, and things like that, you know, the potent, the, the employers are actually paying for subscriptions to have access to the different designers and, and whatnot. So, so what should your portfolio contain? What should you make sure is in that portfolio to ensure that it is as complete as possible? So first off, obviously you want to give off examples of your work. That's the whole reason, or that, that's the main reason why we're creating these portfolios. You also want to see if you can watermark your images whenever possible. Most of you should be able to do this at this point. You can do it in a number of different ways by utilizing Photoshop, Illustrator, even InDesign, just placing some kind of mark on your images to indicate that it is your property, your mental property. 
And uh, it, it's just it's it's just a smart thing to do. If it's not something that you have done, it's not a big deal. It just un unfortunately in this industry, there are instances where people will try to take your work. Luckily, I have never had that instance, but um, and I've been doing this for almost two decades now. But it's just kind of one of those things to to help try to keep your 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 work safe. Your contact information. Yeah, the you you want your your potential employers your clients you want them to be able to contact you uh, if they have work for you that's obviously a big one whether you provide simply your phone number or simply your email or maybe you include your phone number your email a mailing address your Twitter Facebook LinkedIn snapchat Instagram just everything you that is your choice as long as you provide something on there for them to be able to reach you you want to give a little bit of information about yourself maybe you want to tell your whole backstory and how you became a designer maybe you want to get a little personal talk about your 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 life and your interests maybe you would rather kind of keep to yourself and keep it really professional okay this is my work experience this is my my education um, you don't feel the need to tell your potential employers that you have three cats one of them's name is you know Fritzy and um, you know they love to take baths I, I don't I don't know um, but you know you want to provide just some kind of um, context for your potential employers and your client to, about you. And that might be just enough to catch the, the client's or the employer's attention to make them, to kind of draw them in and make them want to look at more of your work. And then lastly, testimonials. If you have testimonial, uh, excuse me, testimonials, share the crap out of them. Make sure that if you have people that have already used you that have already asked for you to do work for them and are happy for it are happy with it make sure you share that information so that other people out there know how good you are they they will see that confidence coming through on your resume on your um in your in your biography but those testimonials will be that much more supportive of of your work so when is your portfolio complete you might be wondering you know am I going to be uh, add, do I need to make sure that I add you know, two or three pieces every year you know once I get a couple of years in am I good maybe am I done after after my education is complete I've got my degree nope sorry the answer is never your portfolio is never complete and that is not a bad thing so don't let that scare you it is simply that we are always growing as people and as a result we are always also growing as designers your portfolio is a living breathing organism essentially and if you have found that your portfolio has not changed that is a red flag. You need to make sure that if you are still in the industry, you need to stay relevant by making sure you update your portfolio on a regular basis. The that like a like we said in the benefits slide, it keeps you updated. It keeps you organized. You want to make sure you're not including information up there that is um, completely. Uh, I was going to say irrelevant. Yeah, I guess that is that is essentially the term that I'm looking for. You know, if you uh, if you're looking in houses or if you got what is it called? Um, uh, the, you've got these like home design, you know, or remodel TV shows. I'm sorry, I don't watch TV anymore because it's all crap. <laughs> um, you're watching these design TV shows, and they're they're walking through these homes, and you can tell that it hasn't been remodeled in 40 years there are you know fixtures that just scream the 1950s and not in a good way there are pieces of furniture that maybe look old and dinged up because they've been used for a long time it's the same kind of thing essentially it's just digital so you want to make sure that your work doesn't age itself and that in addition to that, by posting new work, you're showing clients that you're still 
doing that work. If you have something in your work, in your portfolio, that's 10 years old and you're still looking for design work, a potential employer might think that you're maybe, maybe your talents didn't show up well enough and you haven't been hired in several years. So what makes them think that they would want to hire you? So you want to make sure that you are showing them that, yes, you want me, I can do this job, and you won't regret giving me a call. So we are going to have one final secret question for the mod. If you are watching this and you see the secret question, and you shoot me the answer. I, like I said uh, yesterday, 10 additional points on any assignment in this particular, this particular mod. So, uh, cause I was gonna do, um, you know, a couple, couple extra day or, or days or so. I did that last week. However, unfortunately I can't extend any of the deadlines for this week because it's the last mod. So final secret question. What color is my hair this week? Last, uh, last mod it was blue. This week, it's green. I had colored it green for Christmas, and it's uh, it's not quite that bright anymore, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we had some family holiday pictures taken, and uh, that, was the, that was the color I used. So, that is the end of the slideshow for today, and we're gonna get going on our portfolio for today. I'm just pulling up my web browser. Just give me one second here, because right now, there we go. I also have my email open because I want to show you one of the emails that actually came through from one of the portfolio sites, but I just, I, you know, you guys don't need to be flipping through that email there. So that would be boring for you. Let me just pull up this as well. So now the first thing, let me just kind of give you an overview. This is essentially my, this is one of my, my portfolio sites. I actually have two. I have a third one that I really need to do a little bit of work on. I've only had it created for about a month. Um, that's the, the Adobe portfolio one, actually. I just need to go in and make some tweaks. But these are the two that I've had the longest, and I actually have um, a couple just for redundancy's sake, I have had instances where one of the servers went down, so I, I don't remember which one offhand it was, if it was Behance or if it was CoreFlow, but one of them was down. I had a job interview and my potential employer mentioned, um, you know, hey, this link isn't working. And I said, we'll try the other link. And they said, yep, okay, that's fine. Um, so, and all of these images are actually, actually identical. I had them set up. So when I upload one to uh, Behance, I also do it to Curlflow. Unfortunately, it doesn't do it at the same time. I have to do it manually. But I find that it is, I'd rather have that and I'd rather spend the extra time than find out that um, not having an available portfolio was actually detrimental to my job search. So uh, this is... Like I said, this is Coraflow, and these are the individual categories that I have. Some people like to break their, their work down into projects, which is absolutely fine. That's actually how I did this one right here. And the reason why it's set up by project is because there were a lot of pieces in the works for this particular project, and um, obviously these images are rather large. And this was, uh, well, 2014, so it was a few years ago, and I hadn't reduced these images because they were really, really high quality, and I didn't, I didn't actually want to shrink them too much. But so this clothing line was what I had done. This is uh, Vanessa Alfaro. She is a model slash uh, clothing designer, and she had requested I help her with the graphics for that project. So that was the reason why I did that project like that. However, I kind of dabble in a lot of different things, so I've kind of grouped them all together. You guys currently are working mainly in graphics, so you, you know, you might not have paintings, you might not have drawings, but you very well may have, you know, some photo editing or 
maybe some just vector screen print art. These are some social media ads. So there's, like I said, there's a lot of different types of design out there. And actually, I think I even showed this in the um, demo, or not the demo, because that was the assessment for last week, but when I was kind of going over the tips for the assessment, I think I actually even showed you that particular image. So this is the way that Behance is set up. You can customize individual things. You have avatars you can customize. Actually, on Coraflow, you can also do, like I said, you have the uh, my core, uh, cover photo here. This I am not signed in. This is what an employer would see if they clicked on my information. We have a little bit of information over here. This is my company name, my company website. Um, follow me. These are the different um, social media sites that I or accounts that I actually have connected. Here's a little bit of my resume and uh, a little bit of a little bit of background. So it's. This is, and actually, what did that just say? 2010. So that's how long I've had this particular, this particular uh, portfolio. I believe Coraflow was my first one. So, and um, the uh, clients and, excuse me, clients and employers can click on any particular, there we go. See, and this is actually just an example of a watermark. It's fairly faint but it is across that area. And I haven't done it on all of mine, which is, you know, shame on me. Um, but it is kind of just an example of the different, different kinds of things you can do. You can make them tiny, you can make them go across the entire thing so no one can use it at all. That is completely up to you. So let's get started. I'm actually gonna bring this right over here. I, uh, I might go back and forth, so I actually have them in different browsers. So once you go over to the um, Behance site, it's going to have you create a, an account. If you have an Adobe ID already, which you probably will, given that you're in the graphics program, you can use that information. If not, it, it, creating an account is fairly self-explanatory, using an email, creating a password, and Voila, and no, oh, oh goodness gracious. Oh, goodness, oh, that's why. Oh, you wanna make sure that you spell your stuff right. <laughs> there we go. So now here we are logged in. And typically what you see initially is these are, like I said, um, these are kind of resources. These are other artwork, other pieces. Oh, this is beautiful. Other um, designers that are sharing their own work. This looks like this is Steve Jobs. Maybe it's just a doppelganger, but maybe. Let's see what it is. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what that is. See, now, this is an individual's really kind of neat portfolio where it looks like, I don't know if their, their work is the layout or if it's the, the drawing portion. Either way, kind of neat. And you could actually find out a little bit more about this particular project. So this guy, <laughs> these things have been viewed they're almost 3,400 times and has 400 likes. Um, so you are able to provide a bit of information on your project when you create them. And we'll show you so this one right here. All he has is that it was an issue of a particular magazine. This guy looks like he might be in France. Um, but you can actually include a lot of information or a lot or as little as you'd like. It is good to kind of give some kind of reference for what the project was. And before I actually even do that, let me actually go back down to, here we go, Coraflow. I actually have it set for notifications and it will give me some information here. You can just take like a brief look, see what, oh, look, we've got some, we've got some game stuff that has, has come up. Someone is working on some bathroom designs, which is kind of interesting. Uh, let's take a look at, let's take a look at the, the Rock'em Sock'em robots. And this particular person was being featured. Looks like they do a little bit of illustration. So that's really kind of neat. 
Um, looks like actually this might even be a mini sport games using characters. Yeah, so I was gonna say it almost looks like maybe product development, like toys or something. Um, so that's really, that's kind of neat. They've, they've kind of taken a concept here. And um, if I decide I wanna follow them, boom, there you go. You've got that, that little thing right there. So that it serves as a little resource for you as do these right here. I think the, the last time I came in here, I saw like a giant clown or something. And I don't know if it was photography or what in God's name it was, but it scared the crap out of me when I logged in. Um, so this is really, you know, a, one of those, one of those arenas where you, you could find a lot of information. So now what you're going to end up doing is after you have created your account, you want to give a little bit of information. This area right here is your, um, that's going to be your account. You can upload an avatar here, like I mentioned. Sorry, I'm clicking it and it's just thinking. Oh, I actually was just bringing it through. So, okay. Um, so on the left-hand side here, all of this information actually would be blank. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to edit your profile and hopefully your computer will be running faster than mine tonight. There we go. And you want to fill in as much information as you possibly can. So obviously I have my, my full name, my occupation. I actually need to even put in, here we go, uh, graphic arts instructor. I actually haven't updated that particular one in this portfolio. So boom, there we go. I have updated something in my own. I need to save it. But uh, so we have all of these links right here that we can include, you know, and they, we have a, a dribble one right here. So even though um, this is not a dribble portfolio, we can link those up. We have some information right here and you can actually access them by clicking the, the navigation over here or just simply by scrolling down. You'll notice as I scroll further down, the next portion is highlighted. So we have a little bit of, uh, of a bio, my work experience right here, which you can very easily go in and you can edit it that way. Oh, and actually, I'm sorry, we have view resume right up here as well. So this is everything after, oh, actually I do have it in here. I just didn't have it in my title. So this, this is essentially the quote unquote professional form of it. This has everything compiled in one spot. So if an individual wants to print out their resume, they don't have to print out, you know, this, this junk right here. Um, you can rearrange them if you would like. We have the education and the awards, number of different skills that you can, um, let's try this. You know, you can enter in information and have those have those put in there. Sometimes I think it comes up with suggestions. So let's go back to the main portion here. So we were just in edit work experience. We have some websites. I have entered in these two websites right here. And my website, I always have it say under construction because I am always working on it. And in the event that something happens to go down because uh, I currently am changing something, I, I want that to be, to be known. Uh, so we're gonna go back to the profile here and I'm gonna show you how to create a project. So essentially these are each called projects. So these are, I mean, they're essentially albums or compilations of the different, um, different work that I've done. So you're gonna start, oh, and look at this. I can actually, this is fairly new. I can add a banner image. Oh, that's great. I'm gonna actually do that. I'm gonna look for the same, same banner image that I have on my other one. Let's take a look. Oh, you know what? It's not under there. It is under purple spider graphics. And where is, there he is. This is actually a shot that I took. And I use this for lots of different things because, oh, and I can't do that anyways, um, because Purple Spider Graphics is my company name. So boom, there we go. And I just added, I just added something brand new that, that wasn't up there before, so. 
And that is another reason why to always keep your portfolio up to date because uh, especially with these sites that you are not managing yourself, they make changes all the time and you wanna make sure that you're current. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna backtrack a little bit. We're gonna go up to create a project. And a lot of this is very much, um, it, it, it is very, very user friendly. You can either, you know, walk right, right through the steps right here. You could walk through the steps right here. You can go through absolutely every single option and change things around. You don't have to, you can leave some as their defaults. That is completely up to you. My suggestion is to make sure that you at least set aside some time at some point you'll be creating this portfolio this week obviously you're only going to be uploading one file but at some point when you have compiled quite a bit of work to make sure that you get that stuff up there if you compile as you go that's actually wonderful um, but don't necessarily if you have 30 images that you somehow want to get up there and label and organize don't do two and then come back to it and then do another two and then come back to it because if you already have them there Getting them out there, you know, spending the time to actually get it done makes so much more sense. So we're going to upload, we're going to upload a couple files. And let me actually see, I think, because I actually like to keep a folder in here. This is work that I need to actually get up there. So let's see, let's take a look. We'll do this guy. And we'll do this before and after, and we'll do the digital and the final print of those invitations. So we have a couple here, and you can, like I said uh, earlier, they, um, oh, be converted to CMYK. Okay, so we have some messages coming up. You can, and it is probably smart to make sure that you reduce the images before you actually get going on them. This is a really great size, obviously, because you can see them. This one, not so much because it wasn't really ready to be uploaded. This is a before and after a vector recreation of this particular truck. It's for a t-shirt that I did. Okay, so now you can edit these. Like I said, it's good to kind of put some kind of description and you can do that by adding a caption right here. Artistic Kraken Designs. Hard. And, um, and actually, yeah. Um, I like to sometimes do a customer name with what the product is. The how you decide you want to do that is completely up to you. Just hit enter. And actually, I'm sorry, just click off of it and it will. It will uh, save. You can change the style. Maybe you want to make it bold. Maybe, oh, and actually it looks like I didn't highlight that, that D when I was doing it. Maybe you want to center it. Um, you can actually also as well, let's, um, let's get a couple all uh, here as well. I'm just putting some text down. So, so just so you can see. <laughs> All right, and there's actually a way to do it in here as well. It was at, it will actually grab everything. So if we go to captions, we just added captions. Let's go, let's go Bookman, that's very different. And we're gonna make it red. Now you can notice behind it that it's changing as I'm doing it. We'll make it a little bit bigger. Oop, bigger, no, it's not smaller. Can I go any bigger? There we go. Plenty. There we go. Now it should, I'm going to hit save. It should have done all of them. See? Does it all at the same time, which is great. You don't have to go and do it one by one. There are also other things in here that you can do. You can actually work on the dividing um, space between. Where is it? Oh, that's not it. No, spacing. I'm sorry. The spacing in between your images here. You can see it kind of spreads out a little bit. And uh, let's take a look. Let's let's do, let's make a pink background. Oh, come on. Why did you not select? 
I'm not really sure why it's not. Oh, there we go, because I wasn't selecting it there. Uh, so let's do it. There we go. Now that's incredibly horribly bright and difficult on the eyes, but you kind of you get the you get the gist of it. You can you can change it if you want. And actually, I th actually think I might even go in there at some point and do that. Um, so those are just a couple of different ways that you can change that information up. Once you have gone through all of your media options here and you have said, okay, I have, I have my stuff. Let's, let's save this up. You can hit save. Okay. It's out there. Keep going to make sure that you finish the, uh, finish filling everything out, but at least now you know that what you've done so far has been saved, just like what you do with your projects. So we're gonna um, DES 109 example. This is the title of my project by Melissa Kinney. Great. This is going to be my feature photo. So if you see, if you see on my portfolio here, all these individual pictures had to be chosen. I tried to pick an image that was representative of that particular project. So that's what, yeah, and you can pick the different ones that you have down below. You can pick which one you want. You can zoom in, you can move it a little bit. Um, actually, let, yeah, let's do that. We'll, we'll kind of zoom in on the diaper raffle card here. And you can see how it's changing over here as well. So we're gonna crop that and continue now. Here we have some more information to fill out for the project. Fill out, like I said, fill out as much as you possibly can. Ch tell your customers, your clients, what it is you're doing and how and why you're good at it. So what kind of project is this? Well, we're gonna pretend that this is graphic design and uh, let's see, what else can we add? I mean, there's lots and lots of Let's see, we're gonna look for and see if we can find screen print art because that's what the truck was. Nope, not screen print. Um, it was an apparel print. So let's see if maybe this apparel, nope, nothing there either. But there are a lot of different categories here that you can, that you can do. Maybe vector, nope, my goodness. I mean, you'll be able to, you'll be able to specify all of the different kinds of things that I actually just mentioned in a completely separate section. So let's go illustration, there we go. And actually I think the other one was an invitation, so that would have been print. So let's go print design, there we go, done. That does not contain adult content, so I don't need to check that. And I currently don't have any licenses or copyrights on it. Co-owners, it's all my work, so I don't have to, um, make sure that I include anyone else in there. Tools, this helps feature what your skills are, some of your skills. So Illustrator, and look at that, it comes right up. Um, Photoshop, oops. Photoshop, because I had to use that for the truck a little bit. InDesign. Um, I'm trying to think, I think those are the only three things that I used there. Yeah, let me. Nope, I thought maybe it would give actual equipment as well, but it doesn't. So go through and fill each one of these out. Display, these are your settings, where you want them displayed, whether or not you want comments. Discoverability, here we go, project description. Example of DES 109 online portfolio. Session to demo. And here is where you can actually add in that other information. So vector, screen print work. Um, I don't really need work. Um, invitations, because that's what the other thing was. Uh, trying to think of anything else. Uh, you know what? Um, trailer truck, which you'd be surprised at how many guys love their trucks and their bikes. So um, I know that I've actually found hobbyists even on these sites as well. Uh, who was the work done for? Um, Independence University, it might even be up here as well. I don't think it is, but let's, let's try IU. No. Nope. 
No, nope, not quite up there just yet, but you can see it's populating a lot of different colleges. So if this was done for a particular organization, feel free to include it in there because they might actually have a way to link it up there. It's a, another great way to be able to increase your discoverability. Uh, anybody else you want to recognize, teams that you worked with, okay? We're going to publish this and get this out on that portfolio. We're making some good time here. Hopefully I'll be able to go through everything else. Okay, so now here we have a link that it just showed for this particular project. You can include it and these links will bring you right to your um, login pages for your accounts. Same thing here, Twitter. I'm actually hitting control here and so it would essentially open up in new tabs because I didn't want this redirecting. Um, because it very well may, I'm not certain. But now, so we've published this particular project. It hasn't shown up here, but if we reload the website, it should. And bingo, here it is. So now, and any individual can click on this and take a look and see this particular work. Okay, so, and down here, you can see where we've added some of the information. Example of DES 109 online portfolio session. and. It, says one view that's because I'm viewing it right now the tools we use those are the ones that I signed that I um, that I mentioned um, these are not the keywords these are the categories and then we have the keywords that I put right here so all that information shows up and let's see let's actually go back here this is the the page where we're we're working on it so now let's actually go to the profile up here and again this is actually this is going to show everything here. We have this one right here. We can edit, we can unpromote, I mean, excuse me, we can promote it by sending it to other sites. We can edit it if I need to upload something again later. Okay, or if, you know, you, you upload five images, you realize, crap, I didn't um, watermark any of them. So you go in there and you can remove all the ones you did. Or maybe you, maybe you uploaded five and four of them had watermarks, but one of them didn't. You can remove that one and you can replace it with a new one. You can also keep it, but unpublish it. So now it's not published. And if I go back to the main site, the employers will see. Uh-oh, that's not right. That shouldn't be there anymore now. So last modified, well, you know what, let's give it a few minutes. Maybe it just takes a minute because it disappeared from my work and it should be in the drafts it said. My product, project, and then actually I'm not even sure since I've never actually really even done that. I'm not even sure where the drafts are. So we would need to take a look at that. And I, let's take a look. Let's see if I can find here we go. And actually this might, yeah, this is actually taking me to, um, oh, here we go. Perfect. Right up top, right, right above and the profile. This is where we were a few minutes ago when I noticed it disappeared. Okay, we have, this is our work, our collections. Not really sure what that is. <laughs> that actually might have been for one of the other, cl uh, other classes that I've done. Appreciations. Insights, this is all the information. Wow, project views, uh, three and a half thousand views. That's pretty awesome because I didn't realize that at all. Um, and here are the drafts, so I can go back in there and I can actually modify that. Um, so now something you wanna make sure you have done for this week's project, you wanna make sure that you upload an avatar of some sort and fill out this information. I do want to make sure I also mention to you, you can actually specify if you notice up here, actually let's go back to um, the employer view. If you notice up here, I have behance.net slash PSG14. PSG stands for Purple Spider Graphics. 14 is my number. I actually customized that URL and that's something you can do. You do not have to, but it's something that you can do if you want. You go up to account, and hit settings. Oh, and now it's asking for my password again. Wants to make sure no one else wants to change my settings. Uh, 
Oh, thank goodness gracious. I'm sorry. Hold on. There we go. I was forgetting my number. So now this is your account settings. And you'll notice um, I have, you know, various things that are uh, that are checked off, others that aren't. Right up here with your um, email, you can edit your Behance URL. You can customize it right there. You want to use your name. You want to use your nickname. You, uh, you have a freelance business on the side already. Why not add that? Customize it. Make it your own. Um, again, you do not have to. That is not something that you will be docked points for in your project. It's just another little something. Sometimes, excuse me, <laughs> sometimes it is easier to remember um, something like that as opposed to behance.net backslash one, two, seven, eight, nine, three, four, hyphen, whatever. Um, you can give them a little, a little name and number combo or whatnot. So you can go also go through these all settings as you, as you go and customize them as you want. Now, you can also want to make sure that I mentioned to you, you can also use, uh, do, 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 do. come on, oh, for crying out loud. Adobe Portfolio. Let me actually go back here. No, that's not where I want. Okay, there we go. So Adobe Portfolio is actually an automatic um, setting. You can actually, uh, I'm trying to figure out exactly where it went. Oh, so I apologize. The um, Adobe Portfolio is something you can actually use directly from your Behance site. And let me see. There we go. Adobe Portfolio. Build your portfolio. And we can go right from here. I actually, like I had mentioned, I already have it set up. Um, it's right here. I, I need to, it's just a draft, so I need to continue working on it. But you essentially follow the prompts the exact same way. So you have, uh, this would have, I believe, would have said create your site. It actually compiles all of the work that's already on your Behance site. So if you notice, I didn't put any of these things in manually. These are items that you've already seen in my portfolio. These are all the categories. So I can go in here and I can edit this however I'd like. Let's go, let's maybe make that, you know what? Let's see what they have for fonts. I have certain fonts that are my brand, but you know, you're, you're kind of limited when you're working with, um, working with something that's already, already made for you here. So, um, but you know, link to work. We have all of these, all these different categories, but I've already made. Let's make it purple because that's my color. That's what I jam with. Done, done. Boom, you notice it changed right up here. So, and then as soon as I'm ready, as soon as this is what I want, how I want it to look, I can publish it the exact same way I just published the Behance site. So, getting back to the assignment in question, Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm trying to grab, whoop, not independence. There we go, independence is what I want, not Southern New Hampshire University, because I have been doing my own work as well this week uh, for my own degree. Here we go, there we go, now I'm in, now I'm in Canvas. So for this assignment, we want to make sure, oh, not not assignment number three, sorry, my trigger happy finger is clicking on the wrong things. These are the items that you wanna make sure you're considering after you have put together your portfolio. Is the work that you're trying to um, submit free from spelling errors? Is it high resolution? Is there something that's particularly important? This is kind of where the categories kind of come in or your project groups how you want to show those things off. Would it make sense to include a physical mock-up of this piece? I've done that um, do, 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 right here, actually. This right here is actually packaging design for a bracelet that Tiger Woods did actually um, support. It was a fundraising bracelet. Bingo. 
not the greatest photo, but that actually, it came from my clients. So I kind of had to deal with what I was given. Um, but that essentially was what it was going to end up looking at, looking like the, the blister pack was something that he had ordered to see how it would look. Um, this was just printed off his machine, but that's the kind of thing that that's how it was going to end up looking. We have uh, a box design here. Again, images from the customer, that's how it was assembled. So that's, that makes sense to, to do it that way. Once you have created your portfolio, fill out your information, your, your profile, upload your picture, make sure everything's nice and professional. Use the, the poster that you are revising for assessment four, that's going to be your very first piece. If you have other things that you would like to include, that's absolutely fine. Um, just you know, obviously make sure that you're taking into consideration your choices. And then when you're finished, take that URL, whether it's something that you have customized or not, it does not matter, <clears throat> excuse me, and you are going to be leaving it in the assignment comments when you upload it. And then you're also going to email that link to your FPA and to me. Uh, and again, if you don't know who your FPA is, let me know, and I, because I have a list here, and I can let you know. Um, when what you are going to be doing to submit it, you take your finished poster from the, the assessment, export it as a JPEG, because um, that's one of the few, um, what's it called, uh, file types that it actually that Behance will accept. And let's see, I don't know. I think it's like JPEGs and GIFs, I think is the other one. You should, you, I mean, if you have a JPEG, you are good to go. You're, you're, you should be fine. So if you don't want, just don't want to screw with that, then you're fine. Uh, if you created a mock-up, uh, also export the mock-up as a JPEG. Create a new project in your site, just like we did for the poster. If you want to label it DES 109, if you want to label it Independence University, uh, however you want to label it, that's up to you. Upload all the images that you want with some kind of reference, written reference, and submit the link, <clears throat> excuse me, in, like, like I said, in the submission area, and then email those to me. So that is for the assignment. And I'm trying to think if there's, oh, the career integration quiz, we're like, well, we're gonna end up going over just by a couple of minutes, but I do wanna make sure that I go over this as well. Because that is the last portion. We, we kind of briefly went over the assessment yesterday. Okay, because I can't do much more else with this. So your career integration quiz is, um, there are just a few questions that are um, about this particular course. I cannot emphasize enough when you are answering these questions, if it, you know what, we can actually, for example, we'll just, we'll go over one of the questions just to give you an idea. What did you find of most value from the readings? You can include videos in this course and why. Please do not leave generic answers. If I can take that answer that you've given and apply it to any course at all, points will be docked. It needs to be something specific. If what you have found of most value is learning how the elements and the principles of design work together, bingo. That is, you know, that, that's the kind of answer that we're looking for. Uh, we need to determine how these courses are helpful for you guys. And if we have very generic, generic answers, that doesn't help us improve these courses. Um, so we need to make sure we're getting the right kind of information. It's not a very long, a very long quiz, but this is, it is actually is very, very beneficial for us. So, um, so it is now half past and we essentially are done with our lectures for this class. Um, I hope that, woo, I hope that you have found the information in um, DES 109 in this mod helpful, beneficial. I hope that I have been helpful to you folks. I haven't had a ton of students reach out for, for information, but I have spent a, deal, a good deal of time with those that have, and I, I do hope that 
the uh, I've been able to clarify items in in uh, a, a sufficient enough way. I am available on Thursday from 12:30 to 2:30 my normal office hours, my normal uh, multi session for anybody that needs one on one help, uh, additional questions. I'll be making phone calls and texts and emails and whatnot, and um, and then I will be making sure that I'm keeping up with my announcements and the discussion posts for the rest of the week. So if I don't speak to any of you, um, you know, before the end of the mod, I wish you all great luck and um, hopefully I'll see you in future class classes.